There are certain principles that you have to become convinced of. Um, will I trust the devil or will I trust God? And I always tell my children, I said, who's wiser than you? God, who loves you more than you love you? God, he should be followed. He should be listened to. And one of the things you have to realize in the book of Proverbs and in other places, sexual sin is actually, if, if there was a sin that's segregated, that is pulled out as extraordinarily dangerous, it is sexual sin. Uh, there's indications in places in Proverbs where you don't recover. You don't recover and your reproach never leaves you. So you have got to become convinced that God's word is true. This is deadly. It will affect your soul, your psyche. It will affect you physically. It will affect everything about you and all the people around you. And it is deadly, 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 deadly. It will kill you. It will kill you. And it is more addictive than anything you could ever dream of. Any drug, it is more addictive than that. Um, one time there were two men talking and while they were talking, uh, one of the men's teenage sons came up and said, dad, you know, they were at a camp and he said, dad, I'm going to go over here with so-and-so girl and we're going to just walk by the, I don't know, the river or something. And he goes, no, you're not. He goes, okay, dad. The boy walked away and uh, the other man said, what's wrong? Don't you trust your son? And he said, no, I don't trust my son. And he goes, well, why not? Because I don't trust his dad. You know, I, I put I, I put all kinds of Evan pays the brunt for this, my son, because I don't travel alone. So he usually travels with me. I'm just not alone. I'm just not going to be alone. OK, I'm old. <laughs> so if I'm not going to be alone at, at almost 60, am I going to leave my boy alone at 16, 17, 18, no, it, it's, it's, it's deadly. But young men, here's what I want you to see more than just about anything. When it, when it comes to temptation, the book of James is probably, you know, it's one of the standard passages, but people stop short and I can't understand why. So it's talking about temptation. It's talking about being enticed. It's talking about lust and lust conceived and giving birth to sin and sin to death. And then people stop there. But then God continues, I believe, talking about temptation. Now he's going to tell you how to defeat it. He says, be not deceived, my, my beloved brethren. Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. So. Like when a man says, how can I make, when an older man tells me, how can I strengthen myself against immorality? Well, strengthen your relationship with your wife. Make her the delight of your heart and you're not gonna have near the trouble with this. And young men say, well, you know, that, that image or that type of thing, it, it's just, it's calling for me. Yeah, but what is that? It's a perverted, counterfeit it's digital it's made out of paper maybe it's it's sick and what are you trading you see the devil says here it is and if you don't take this you have nothing that's a lie your answer should be i'm not taking this because god has that and the only difference is i need to wait I told my sons from the time they were young, you know, and I, I usually tell young men this, they're five, six, seven years old. I'll ask him, I said, so you're praying for your wife? And they go, what? Well, you're seven. She's probably born. <laughs> She's somewhere in the world right now. You praying for her father? that he'd be a good father. You praying for her to be protected from evil men. You need to act like her husband now. When guys say, well, I'm not married yet, so I can, no, 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 no. There's a girl out there. And you keep yourself pure for God. You keep yourself pure for her. 
You, you act as though you're already married. You may not meet her for 20 more years, but you need to be interceding for her, praying for her, praying for her protection, standing in the gap for her. And again, you need to act like a man. That's what men do. Men are protectors. And, and so one of the ways you, you, you overcome these offers of the counterfeit and the perverted is by faith in what God says about his character. Son, I have a plan for you. And more than likely, I have a woman for you. Wait. Wait. Because when you sin against yourself by this sexual perversion, when you sin against God, you're also sinning against her. You're sinning against her. Now, if you've fallen into this, be broken, but not broken unto despair. That's one of the ways in which the devil always wins. You see, when, when, when the devil, the, God will sometimes say things just as hard to you as the devil will say. How do you tell the difference? The devil says, you're this, 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 and this, and you've done this, this, and this. Now run from him. He doesn't want you. You're sick. You're broken. You're wrong. You're cast out. What does God say? God may speak to you even more hard than the, more harder than the devil. But he always ends with, now return. My mercies are new every morning. Return to me. Return to me. And that's what you need to do. You know, just one thing. And I learned this from D. Edmund Hebert. He's, I, I just got everything, every commentary. Is every, I just love him. And in, in 1 Thessalonians, just, just listen, chapter 1, verse 9. For they themselves report about us what kind of reception we had with you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God. You turned to God from idols. And Hebert says there, he goes, the, the order is very, very important. You would assume that he would say you turned from idols to God, but it said you turned to God from idols. And I think Hebert's right in this. It wasn't like the Thessalonians were there in their pagan temples and stuff going, I'm really disappointed in paganism and I wish there was something else, an alternative. I wish someone would come and preach to us. That's not what they were doing. They were totally content in their paganism, their debauchery. And, and paganism is always associated with sexual sin, even in its religion. They were content. They were happy. Do you know what made them unhappy? Was when they heard about Christ. It wasn't until they saw the light of Christ that they saw what they were doing was ugly. So when you're constantly telling men, turn away, turn away, turn away, th they're probably not. And even if they do, it'll turn into some sort of self-righteous Phariseeism. It's like, look to him, look to him, look to him. And when you see him, when you see him, then this becomes ugly. This becomes ugly.